Hey everybody, um, sorry I accidentally hit the stop button on the previous video and didn't hit the pause, so anyway. Here we are building the uh, the Mojo Tone, the um, AB763 Deluxe Reverb. Um, started the the first video, was before this, so it's all supposed to be the first video, but it you know, it'll be split up in small little segments. Um, so this is part two of the board build, and I just wanted to stop halfway through it so you guys can get a good idea of what needs to happen you know, as you go down the actual amp itself. So we have um, you know, different types of caps on here. If you're building a deluxe reverb, you already know, um, at least I, I would hope that you already know if you're, you're taking on this complex amp, um, that you have the basics down and you know, your electrolytic cap, caps are always uh, polarized like your Sprague Adams here for cathode caps. Um, now your coupling caps are not, they're orange drops as you can see here, um, they sound great in, in blackface amps, they really give you that clarity uh, that you need. Um, but if you take a closer look, what I've done is I try to make everything uniform. Um, you can see the information of the, the caps on one side all the way down, um, and of course that will continue down here. Um, and you can see how we straddled the uh, cathode resistors across the cathode caps and again I try to make the information on the caps as visible as possible um, just for you know easy reference down the road in case you need to surface it and I don't remember the value if it's flipped over you know you have to roll it over then of course the older the component gets the more likely it is to break so I, you know I try to keep that up front um, I like to run the cathode res resistors over the top of the actual caps themselves not like what we have here I just have this laying down because it's still loose and I haven't of course, soldered these yet. Okay. Now, um, another thing I want to hit on too is the actual uh, tremolo, the neon and the opticoupler, op excuse me, opti-isolator. Um, it has a neon bulb that's powered off the bottom of the, excuse me, powered off the tubes. Um, so the dot represents a neon bulb and the dot on our, what they call a tremolo bug, always goes towards the actual tubes itself. Um, it has four legs, two for the photoresistor and two for the neon lamp. And again, um, the dot, and even if you don't have a dot on older ones, you'll be able to tell that, well, just looking at this, you can you can see there's a lamp in there. And, you know, it, it's kind of obvious the lamp comes out that, well, it's not so obvious because you don't know. But um, anyway, the dot will be towards the actual tube part of the, of the chassis itself. Um, now, as we move down, I like to keep things, um, I won't say off the board, but in, in the case of the coupling caps, like the, the, you know, the sprigs that we have here, this little gap here is totally fine. Um, anything, uh, let's think about this amp for a second. The board's going to be laying in the chassis like this, and of course the, the chassis is flat, this sits inside the chassis. The tubes are going to be right here, and of course all the heat rises into the actual you know, amp itself. Um, it was just the way they designed it, kind of a weird design, uh, really, because it, it was, you know, the heat rises. Um, most Heath kits and, uh, you know, ham radios and PA systems, uh, the tubes always sat on top, so, you know, it was uh, convection cooling, really, but in this case, it was the exact opposite. Now, when you have your, your components laying directly on your board, um, what happens is that that heat gets conducted, you know, into the actual component itself. Any space you can give yourself, uh, especially for high voltage stuff, um, try to give yourself a little gap like that. Another reason, another advantage for that rather, would be um, this cap board, or excuse me, this main fiber board is always sitting in the amp. Um, and of course, the luxury reverse were, you know, combo amps with a 12 inch speaker. And it went through, you know, in its lifetime, would go through literally tens of thousands of heat up and cool down cycles if you had it for more than 40 50 years um, what happens not only with that is that you start to get component failure because of course as components age and you have a lot of heat and cool down cycles um, also coupled in with that the second factor is a vibration factor so anything you can eliminate the vibration uh, by getting certain components off of the board itself um, like the coupling caps or you know some other stuff it, it's good because uh, you know there's little leads on this especially for a high mass part like this is one of the heaviest capacitors in here it, it kind of gives it a cushion like a shock absorber 
Um, now, resistors are a totally different animal. They're rated up to you know, 400 C or whatever they are rated for, um, and they never have a problem as long you know as well as the uh, the spray electrolytics. We never had a problem with that, so they fit right down on the board. Um, also, the uh, if you happen to notice on this board, we have a couple different types of resistors here. We have the 220Ks, which are here and here. Um, I also have one up here. These are a carbon film type resistor. Um, they're different than the carbon comp that we have here. Now, we try to use these in the power supply um, because they're, they're more consistent, they're flame proof, um, and they tend to be a little bit more quiet than the actual carbon comps themselves. Uh, you cannot UL list anything. Um, I've tried it with a couple OEMs that we've dealt with. I have a hard time, it, I have yet to do it really, to be able to UL list anything, um, or even C for that matter, um, carbon comp resistors because they're not flame proof and because they can actually induce noise into an RF circuit. So more and more builders that are doing this um, are moving towards the carbon film uh, resistors here. And you'll also have, you know, in certain areas for high voltage power regulation, um, like plate resistors, some builders will actually use a metal oxide uh, resistor in those positions as well. We try to keep the tone path, and we try to keep or the signal path. Um, we try to keep everything as it was because you know people fell in love with fenders for, for what they were, and that that was one of the little things that made you know the vintage amps what they were were these uh, carbon comp resistors. Of course, they always you know they use Allen Bradley, and I think they use uh, Koa Spears, and there might have been a couple other ones, um, and that was one of the characters of the actual amp itself. So. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to move on to the rest of the, the board build, um, and I'll be back with that, and then we'll move on to the actual, or the, the traces underneath, um, and just getting the board, entire board wired up, okay? So I'm trying to break this down into small, you know, five to seven minute intervals of, of how you do this, because it takes a lot of attention, you know, to detail when you do this, okay? So you guys hang in there, and I'll be back.